we are about three quarters full welcome back everyone to my channel we are about three quarters full and uh, I've been trying to water conservatively in my garden we have not gotten any rain and honestly I don't even remember it's been well over a month well over a month month and a half um, it was when our building our storage building was finished um, and that wasn't much rain either so things are suffering here bad the ground is cracking I couldn't dig into this ground if my life depended on it not even with my backhoe it's just rock hard it's cracking because it's you know like a sponge without water it just shrinks right and it gets very hard well the ground is pretty much the same way um, so it's things are really bad even the weeds are suffering you believe that <laughs> uh, so the garden has been suffering a lot uh, there, there's a lot of plants there that um, that I know that are not gonna do well anyway so I kind of like left them alone because there's no sense of watering it's just wasting water cucumbers for instance for instance uh, cucumbers they like the cooler temperatures you know 60 70s uh, even 80s but uh, when you start getting in the 90s and hundreds they <laughs> that's about it so cucumbers are done uh, I don't even bother bo bother watering that watering them a lot of my stuff is done pretty much so um, you know it's not worth even watering uh, my trees trees are doing okay um, we got hit so hard uh, with the 2021 with that um, freeze that came down here in February 2021 we got down to single digits here five, I think it was five degrees uh, other places in Texas got to zero and even below zero pipes bursting everywhere the, our homes are not built for uh, that kind of cold weather uh, it's very rare it gets cold like that here I think the last time it happened was over like 80 years ago so uh, so much for climate change <laughs> but uh, yeah it's it's pretty rough right now that we're getting some strange weather patterns um, so like I said the garden is suffering really bad I'm gonna show you some of my trees what has done well here and what has not done well here last year we got a ton of rain uh, too much way too much rain and this year just the opposite we were getting no rain now last week a day last week I don't remember what day it was looking at the weather app and it said 97 percent chance of rain I was like oh finally we're gonna get some rain and I got the uh, system already drained my uh, my first flush uh, uh, pipes out and uh, make sure everything was cleaned out the gutters and everything and we didn't get one drop of rain not one drop at a 97 percent chance which to me was we were going to get rain we didn't get one drop it was all around us except for here today i looked we have this system in the gulf uh, that's brewing or it's coming up it was supposed to be a tropical system or whatever i guess it's fizzling out but it's coming up on shore on Galveston and it's hanging around the Beaumont Galveston Houston area kind of around there right in the Gulf there um, and it looks like the winds are pushing it up this way but it kind of looks like it's stalled um, but they're still saying I don't know 60 something percent chance of rain today tomorrow uh, 80 something uh, 88 or something like that percent chance of rain I'm really hoping and praying that we get some rain at least an inch would be beneficial and it would it would an inch of rain would give me 1500 gallons in these tanks that's a lot of rain that's a lot of water um, but I'm hoping for a decent amount of rain to fill these tanks up and get the ground here back to being somewhat normal so let's go in my garden uh, I'm gonna show you some of my trees how they're doing uh, you know nothing spectacular here but uh, I'll show you what's doing good and uh, what has not done good all right so the first thing we need to know about fruit trees is what grows well in your area each fruit tree has to have a certain amount of chill hours in order for it to be able to produce fruit 
uh, for the following year. Chill hours are anything below 45 degrees, I think it is. Um, some fruit trees require a thousand um, chill hours. Others only a couple hundred, if that. So the ones that require over a thousand, you know, chill hours and stuff, those are, do well in the northern states, obviously, because they get snow and it's always cold in the wintertime. Um, here in East Texas, uh, here I think we roughly get between five and seven hundred hours of chill hours, right somewhere on there. So when I go to look for fruit trees, I have to stay, I try to stay even below 500 because I don't even want to take a chance with, you know, 700. Um, so if it stays below fi or 500 chill hours, some of my fruit trees only require a couple hundred, maybe 300 at most. That way I know because it'll do well because we get some sometimes some pretty mild winters here uh, and like last year we got a, a week of just frigid cold weather um, but uh, it, it's gonna vary you know the weather can do that sometimes so you need to know what chill hours that are what chill hours you get in your, your area first of all and then get the trees that uh, accordingly usually when you go to a uh, nursery usually they are there for your area not always okay they're gonna come with a tag look at the tag and look at the chill hours that it requires uh, if, and then look and find out in your area what growing zone you're in find out what chill hours you get you can find that stuff online okay just do the search for chill hours and zone whatever you're at and it'll tell you um, so chill hours very important the second thing you need to know when you're getting fruit trees is um, the pollination. Is it open pollination or does it need another tree to be pollinated with? Um, when I first moved here, I didn't understand none of that stuff really. Uh, so I was just buying whatever they had at the nurseries and planting it. And uh, here I did very well, okay. Other trees that I, I got some pears that didn't produce nothing for me because I didn't know about whether it was self-pollinating or it needed to be pollinated with another tree. Um, so those are the most important things you need to know when you're getting fruit trees for your area. Now this persimmons tree here, what was it? Last year it got hurt because of that cold weather we had in February. We had um, single digit temperatures. It doesn't like that, but they survived. Um, it survived pretty good actually, very well. But after that, it produced very little fruit. This year, I got it's back to normal again. Um, but in 2020, 19 and 20, we, we were getting, off of my two trees here, of these persimmons, we were getting just over 200 persimmons. So about 100 per tree. And um, that was, they were super delicious, very sweet. When you pick them, you pick them, they have to look ripe, of, of course. But you pick them, they're still hard. And within a few weeks to a month, they're going to ripen. They're going to get nice and soft and very, very sweet. Um, I just like opening them up, get a spoon, and just start spooning them. <laughs> they are so sweet. Um, but uh, persimmons grows very well here in East Texas. The next tree that grows really well here in East Texas is the jujube. Now, jujubes, they grow anywhere from zone... I believe six to nine, something somewhere around there. They grow really well here in East Texas. They produce a fruit that is about the size of a plum, and, or a little smaller actually maybe, um, that has an apple texture to it, but it's very, very sweet with one big seed in the middle. When these things start producing fruit, I can't stop eating them. They're so delicious. Now this one I had to cut back because these grow like weeds, which is a good thing. What happens is the, uh, they start sprouting from underneath the roots uh, very rapidly. And pretty soon it'll just turn into a bush, okay? And it gets out of control. So this one was doing that. And I had to find the main one, the main runner, whatever you want to call it, and cut everything else out of the way. And whenever another one sprouts out, I usually cut it and not let it grow because I want all the energy to go into the main tree. 
this one in the winter i it was doing it was a bush and i cut it all down and that's why it's small right now um it's hard to find time because i'm so busy with other things here on the property but um this year and the following years coming um i am going to make an effort to take care of the trees that, that grow well here because this is what, what this is what is going to produce fruit for us in the future and food okay uh so take care of the trees that you enjoy and grow well this one here it does need a lot of pruning because like i said it grows like weeds but it's mainly from the bottom okay because they come up from the bottom and they'll just take over and they'll grow into a big bush and the fruit will become very small if you want big fruit make sure you prune it into a tree and it'll put all its energy into that tree and your fruit will be bigger this is its first year cut into a tree because it was a bush so um we got a few fruit on this one um but uh I'm, the following years it'll be much better okay so i'm not sure if i mentioned it but the jujube that i just talked about was it's called a honey jar this jujube here is called a lee jujube um, the honey jar is actually sweeter but i'll take this too this is very good very sweet too this is called the lee jujube i have one branch that's i was going to trim but it had already had fruit you can tell it had a little bit of fruit on it uh starting and so i, I kind of left it alone for this year i need to support it and put it up like this uh, which i soon will do um, again the jujube grows fantastic here the problem is if you see down here we got a lot of new growth even over here uh, jujubes have to be careful they're very very thorny okay so you got to be careful where you touch them because it will poke you and poke you well too um, but the fruit it gives is just out of this world it's very very delicious um, this one grows actually it's been growing better than the honey jar this one was also very bushy I planted these both at the same time um, the thing I noticed about this the fruit was a little bit smaller than the honey jar and, and and not as sweet as the honey jar I prefer the honey jar more than this one but uh, like I said this is very good too so jujubes grow excellent as far as I know from zone six to nine right in that range okay another tree that uh, is actually doing well here which is a big surprise to me is this Anna's apple apple tree um, as you can see here we're getting some nice fruit and we got a few more over here uh, very surprising to me because apples grow better in the northern states uh, down here it's, it's just too hot and you need again a certain amount of chill hours for the tree to be able to uh, produce its fruit um, this one really was a big surprise to me but it's been growing pretty good and it's called an Anna's apple uh, apple tree so this apple tree here is a granny smith it's still very small uh, it's I planted this maybe maybe two years ago uh, but we're producing some small fruit granny smith does pretty good here um, another one we have over here is a gala apple um, it's doing okay too and then i have another one uh, next to that it got hit by some disease on the bark the bark was peeling off of it and um, it got hit pretty hard but it is producing some apples uh, i don't remember what variety that is but the um, gala and the granny smith uh, are doing pretty good here in east texas uh, very surprising uh, it does get hit with blight you can see here blight and there's some more blight over there um, but um, you have to spray that with uh, copper spray some kind of fungicide and um, that should take care of it but um, some apple trees again you got to look at the tag when you go to buy them uh, make sure the chill hours are um, adequate for your area um, if it requires a thousand chill hours and you're only getting five six hundred don't expect it to produce any fruit okay so always keep that in mind when you're going to a nursery to look for fruit trees this here is an Ozark plum 
We've only had it produce fruit for us one time. And uh, that was last year. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was last year. And uh, it didn't do too well. Uh, I barely got to taste any. Now, we've had this tree, is, we've had this here since 2016. Only produced fruit for us once. Why? Because it was my mistake. It needs to be pollinated by another variety of um, plum. So I had to plant last year a methyl, I think it's called methyl plum tree. And there's a few other ones that, that can do well with this. Uh, I didn't know that when I first moved here. I just, oh, it's a plum tree, we're gonna have plums. But no, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't always work that way. Again, find out if you're, the trees you're buying are self-pollinating or you need another tree to pollinate that tree. This is, if there's a certain type of plum, or I'm sorry, any type of fruit tree that you like, and it, sells, it says not self-pollinating, you have to, and then it'll tell you, it should tell you on the tag, at the nursery, it should tell you on the tag what other trees would do well with that plum tree, uh, or fruit tree. And um, so you're gonna have to buy two trees and plant them fairly close together so when the bees come, they can come and cross-pollinate between the trees and you should have some very good fruit that way. But again, my mistake, uh, last year we, 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 we did get fruit from it, so we must have had uh, bees coming from another area that were already pollinated from another plum tree and were able to pollinate it. Um, I'm not sure if a peach tree would be able to pollinate it. Um, not 100% sure because it is a stone fruit but not sure if a uh, peach tree will be able to pollinate this uh, but we did get some fruit last or last year uh, again from some bees that were pollinating another uh, tree that did well with it um, so i had this methyl it's very small but once it starts blooming next year and the ball starts blooming and the bees come we should get some more fruit out of this so this here is a kefir pear um, just like your apples, your pears, they're gonna get hit with blight pretty bad. Um, so the, 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 the blight, all the leaves will turn brown or black and they start dying down. Uh, again, you can hit it with copper spray, but this happens every year, no matter what I do. Um, and we end up getting fruit anyway, so um, not a big deal. This is a kefir pear. Um, out of all the pears that we have, we have a Warren pear and a Bartlett. Um, the Warren and the Bartlett produce zero for us, and it's they're getting huge. Um, I'm thinking about taking them down and planting something else there because, uh, again, I didn't I didn't do my research well enough um, at the time. Um, but they produce no fruit for us, and I have those two varieties, and I had another variety which I didn't re remember what it was, and the, all three of them produced nothing. Even though they were all different varieties. They didn't pollinate well with each other or something and um, never produced nothing for us. So I will not plant any more pears here. Uh, I love pears too and they're delicious, but uh, if they don't grow, they don't grow. There's no, no sense of growing them. Okay, back to the kefir pear. Kefir pear is not a grab it and bite it kind of pear. It's a very hard pear. It never ripens. It'll just rot. <laughs> um, these are canning pears or cooking pears. So. When these get nice and big and they look like they're ready to eat, but they're still hard as a rock, um, you're best to cook them or cook them for canning or just cook them down and, and eat it that way. Um, great for that, they're delicious. Um, but as far as pear trees, I will not buy any more pear trees because they just do not do well in my area here. This here is our apricot tree. Now we had several other apricot trees um, I don't remember if they were the same variety, but we had several. They all ended up dying. Um, they never produced any fruit for us. Again, I wasn't sure at that time, years ago, if they were self-pollinating or not. But now that this is alone, the, the only one left, um, I'm not sure if it's going to pollinate with a, a peach tree or, or not, uh, since they are both stone fruit. But still, it's most likely, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I hate to cut it down because it looks like a nice tree, but if if it doesn't pollinate with another tree, then what good is it having it? You know, so not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. But um, apricots um, 
have not done well here. Peach tree. Well, what's left of it. I have only one branch that's alive on this here and it's growing this way. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cut all the branches off and the main one here um, and try and get it to bend up. I don't know. It just to, I don't know. I don't know what to do because this last year got hit by that cold weather, that five degrees that we had here and a few days of that and this is what happened to it. It's just dead. This one got hit hard. This one got hit hard. The one next to it there is it died. I had to pull it out. And the very far one had has some fruit on it. It held it withstood the cold weather better. Um, but the fruit looks really bad and uh, the, the tree it, it looks like it needs help big time. We've been watering it, but it just, I don't know, it has not recovered since that cold weather we, that we had. Um, peaches are kind of a hit and miss here. Um, they did very well for us in 2019 and 20, if I remember correctly. Decent amount of uh, peaches and uh, very sweet. They were delicious. I don't remember the variety. I don't know, in fact, uh, no, they're not. Yeah, they are peaches. I bought them as nectarines. They were tagged as nectarines. They ended up being peaches, all four of these. Or, the four that I had but um, they were very delicious but after that cold weather that was it um, again peaches here are kind of a hit and miss you, you might do well some years and other years they're gonna suffer like this or die um, so I, I I don't know if I would recommend growing them here in East Texas um, I've heard other people having problems with peaches um, Try it and uh, see what happens. That's all you can do. All right, so fig trees. Fig trees have not done well for me. What, ha what ends up happening is that they, uh, hey little girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. They end up uh, dying down, all the way down to the root and then re-sprouting again. Um, if your fig trees end up doing that, and they do that because it gets too cold here in the winter sometimes, and they die down to the root and of course in the ground and the ground is still warm and they re-sprout again every year. Um, if that keeps happening, you can't produce fruit that way. So I've researched and I found this variety here. I bought this, when did I buy this? During the winter time it was um, online and um, it's called Olympia. I'm pretty sure it's called Olympia fig. They're supposed to grow pretty decent sized fruit on them and they can withstand cold up to zone six I think uh, so we're an eight this should do well here um, so I'm excited about this fig tree and I'm hoping hoping that because um, they grow pretty quick so I'm hoping next year I should really produce some uh, good fruit here um, Figs, as you probably know already, they grow like weeds. In other words, in the bottom, they just come out real bushy and they'll turn into a bush. And to avoid that, you gotta cut all those off and get, get all the energy into the main stem and have that grow into a tree. And cut all the uh, suckers that are growing underneath it, cut those all away. Uh, the fruit will become bigger that way. It'll give more energy to the tree and the tree will get bigger. Um, this is its first year in the ground, so, um, We'll see next year how well it does. All right, guys, so here I have my grapes. These are called Muvedre. And uh, I think they're for wine, but I just want them to eat, okay? I try to get, I try to find a good table uh, grape uh, that would do well here, and I couldn't find something that would grow well here. At least I couldn't find anything, I'm sure there is. I know there is a place in Tyler, or a farm in Tyler, a vineyard, that grows this variety, and I ordered these out of California. I don't remember where, but um, they came from California, and uh, they're supposed to do well here in East Texas. It's called Muvedre, and they are very dark, dark, um, I, they're not a table grape, but uh, 
Uh, they, I think they basically make them from wine, but I'm sure they're delicious just the same. Um, so I had five of them here, and the last two on the very end died in 2021 during that ice storm that we had. Well, not the ice storm, but that cold weather we had. It couldn't handle the five degree uh, temps. The only thing I can think of, and uh, they, they, one didn't sprout anymore, and the other one, you know, from the previous year had grown, but it all died down. So I got these three here, and they're not doing that great right now either. I've been watering them, but again, they're not doing that great. Uh, there were some bugs on there, and I sprayed some uh, neem oil and soap on there, and it seemed to take care of it. Uh, this one here is doing the best. Uh, I've been training it to go down the uh, the uh, lines here, the wire here. This is a uh, forearm niffin, it's called. I have a video on that. I'm going to do that right here. I'll put it right here. Uh, you train the vines to go up and up to the, the, the other one, the other uh, wire. And that's where the, the grapes will then hang from here. Again, they're not doing that great. If it wasn't for that cold weather right now, I'd be eating grapes. Uh, there was a small cluster of grapes. I should have left it, but since I was pruning um, to train it to go a certain way, I had to cut those off. Uh, but I should have left it just to taste it, you know. <laughs> but anyways, patience and hopefully with patience, uh, the reward would be some delicious fruit next year. Um, Hopefully we'll have a normal winter, so uh, we can enjoy some fruit next year. So those are the most important things that you need to look for is the chill hours and if it's self-pollinating or not. Um, I have some more uh, vegetables to pick <laughs> for my dinner, or part of my dinner anyways. Got some... Uh, lovely looking zucchini here and some yellow squash this one looks like it swallowed something <laughs> but uh, anyways uh, hope you enjoyed the video be careful when you're buying fruit trees look at the chill hours and if they're in for in your zone if they'll grow well in your zone growing zone and uh, pollination if it's self pollinating or not all right so uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video.